tonight to a very, very familiar set of scripture, Psalms 23. And actually, I wasn't planning on speaking on this. And I've been meditating on Psalms 91, and I want to speak on that tomorrow morning. But as I was meditating on Psalms 91, it's a, it's a promise of divine protection, Psalms 91, and provision, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, right now, I, I guess you realize, it, it, to me, it's incredible a lot of people in the body of Christ are still operating in fear. A lot of different types of fears. But uh, Christ came to deliver us from fear. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 2.14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death, listen, and deliver them, say deliver them. Yeah. Deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death will bring you into bondage. Uh, 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 you know, the promise, you know, the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. So the promises of God, over and over, we'll look at these some tonight, are given to us that we don't have to fear what men can do unto us. We shouldn't be afraid of what diseases can do unto us. Now, now, I'm not talking about throwing out common sense. I'm not talking about being arrogant or proudful or just brash. I mean, I think about some guys in our society they had no fear of death, not because they shouldn't have been afraid of death. They just didn't have enough brains to be afraid of death. I mean, if you don't know Christ, you ought to be afraid of dying. Honestly, if you're not right with God, you better be afraid of dying. Because there's, uh, there, there's death and then the judgment. And, and if you don't know Christ, you better be afraid. I'm not telling the sinner, don't be afraid. God's with you. <laughs> no, no. Repent. Get right with God. Then you don't have to fear death. You don't have to be afraid of death. Uh, fear of death opens the door for the enemy to come into a believer's life and torment us. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When, when you're operating in faith, those three elements will be manifested. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Notice, in the Holy Ghost. It's not the joy of the flesh. Now, Christ did come to make us happy. Happy is the man that knows the Lord. But the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And one of the promises for the believer, the born-again saint, is God has not given us a spirit of fear. God's not given us a spirit of torment. Worry and anxiety is demonic. Worry is demonic. Uh, there's all kinds of fears. I, I t shared with you my uncle Warren, which was my brother's uh, older, bro my dad's older brother, was afraid. I still remember this as a young boy. Uh, he probably died when I was about maybe 10 years old. I still remember he was a big man, kind of heavy set. Well, he was always afraid of getting cancer. And I think he got leukemia. And when he died, he was just nothing but skin and bones. But I still remember that as a young boy. He was afraid, from what I understand, of getting cancer. And, and, and Job said this. Job said, the things which I most feared came upon me. Now, Job's fear came because of a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Job lived in a time... And they believe that Job might be the oldest book in the Bible. Job lived in a time where the written word was not available to him like it is for us today. And Jesus came to deliver those who their whole lifetime were subject to fear, the fear of death. They were in bondage to a fear of death. So as a born again believer, God's promise is this. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Notice what fear does. L l fear, the f demonic fear will rob you of power. It'll rob you. It'll rob you of love. And it'll rob you of a sound mind. You won't have a sound mind. You'll be tormented. And, and usually people who are tormented, they torment others. They just can't help it. 
So God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So I'm, I'm meditating on Psalms 91, and then Psalms 23 automatically came to me, the part in verse 4. But look at this. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, if you look at Psalms 23, when David, re and this is David referring to himself, and you'll notice Psalms 23 is full of those three elements, righteousness, peace, and joy. Psalms 23, that's why people use it a lot of time when, when saints die, even sinners, and they, they quote Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. So it's going to talk about my, or in a personal intimate way, out of six verses, or it's going to use the emphasis of self 17 times in six verses. 17 times. How in the world could you get yourself in there 17 times? Because David, by the Spirit of God, wrote this, and he's trying to reveal to us this, this, this place in God that takes away all fear, all cares, all worries, all anxieties, all torments, takes it right away. It's like you got a chalkboard that was full of fear, anxiety, worry, uh, uh, you know, concerns. And it's like he takes a, uh, an eraser and wipes it all off the chalkboard. And he puts in there nothing but realities because then he talks about God in a personal way 13 times. So let's just read this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in grand pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. So I'm overemphasizing when he's talking about the Lord, he's talking about himself. He, God, restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. So notice where God's going to lead you into right living. For his namesake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So David said, and he's talking about really this dark, wicked world we live in. Though I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, listen to this, I will fear what? No evil, no evil nada, none, no evil. Does that include COVID? Does it? Yes. Financial lack? Yes. Um, any kind of anxiety, any kind of worry, which frustration comes from that. Uh, people don't realize this. Fear leads into bitterness. Fear leads into anger. Because when the 12 spies came out of the land of promise, and they said, hey, it's a wonderful land that flows with milk and honey. But 10 of them spoke up and said, but, but, but there's giants. There's high water cities. There's, uh, uh, we're but grasshoppers in their presence. And Joshua and Caleb spoke up. They had a different spirit. They didn't have a spirit of fear. They spoke up and they said, hey, yeah, it may be true. But remember now, God's with us. You know, the, the God who just split the Red Sea. You know, the God who just destroyed the greatest nation in the world. Remember that God, guys? And they got mad. Listen, their fear turned to anger, to uh, bitterness and hate, and they wanted to kill. Remember, they're going to they're gonna kill the only two guys who've got faith. That's kind of strange. Why would you kill the one who says, let's believe God? Now, they weren't putting the people down. They weren't saying, you bunch of unbelieving idiots. They didn't say that. They said, hold on, hold on. Let's not move into that realm of fear and worry and anxiety. And remember, it was the 10 leaders of the 10 tribes, Caleb and Joshua over two other tribes, that rose up against Caleb and Joshua. Isn't this a perfect illustration of what's going on in the body of Christ right now? Should not the pastors, come on pastors, I'm not picking on you, Shouldn't you have stood up and put faith in the people and said, well, let's let's do this. Let's obey God even if we die. Doesn't that sound? Let's obey God. Let's obey God even if we die. I mean, that's all there is to it. That's that's the only kind of Christianity yeah, I've known since I've been saved. Let's obey God even if we fail. Joshua, how about how about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? 
All, all of the children of Israel and all the nations that Nebuchadnezzar had conquered were there that day. He brought all, I don't know where Daniel was. I know he wasn't there. Uh, maybe Nebuchadnezzar knew that Daniel would not bow down and worship the golden statue. And so he sent him away to do some kind of uh, ambassadorship somewhere, you know. He says, I know Daniel's never going to bow his knee. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you know what, king? We're, we're not going to worship your golden statue. And if we die, we die. He said, well, I'm going to heat the furnace up seven times fold. He said, well, if we're dead, we're dead. If God delivers us, wonderful. But if he doesn't, so be it. I'm telling you, that's the reason why the church was hated so much in the book of Acts. Why did they hate them? They weren't afraid to die. They said, we're going to obey God. Don't preach in that name anymore. They locked them up. Angel let him go. He said, go down to the place called Straight and preach again. And when they went to get him out of the prison, they were gone. They said, where are they? They said, they're down here preaching. And they went out and arrested him again and pulled him before the, 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 the authorities and said, didn't we tell you not to preach in that name? And you know what they said? They said, listen, uh, if we got to choose between obeying you and obeying God, we will obey God. You just do, you just do your worst. Yeah. We're going to obey God. David lived in this place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost before there was a new covenant. He was living under the old covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant. We got a new and better covenant with the resurrected Lord Amen. who's already washed away our sins and given us a new nature and given us better promises. And all the promises in Jesus are yea and amen. One of those promises says, nothing shall by any means come to harm you. Why don't you reach up and grab that? Yeah, yeah, but I haven't been living in that realm. Well, let me give you the good news. You can. <laughs> you may not have it now, but you can. You know, you can live in that realm. And it says, uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, it's got to be personal. He's talking about me. Now he says, thou, talking about God, prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So you do have enemies. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, the darkness, spiritual, wicked, and high places. And the devil manipulates people against us. It's going to be that way till you leave this earth. It says, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Notice his confession was a negative. Uh, he said, surely evil and terrible things will follow me all the days of my life. He doesn't say that. <laughs> he wasn't like Piglet and, and Charlie Brown, you know, where there was a cloud over him all the time. He said, no, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Grab that mercy. <laughs> Don't we need mercy every day? My life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I'm not exactly sure when David wrote this. He could have wrote it as a young man or maybe years later. I'm not sure. But David was a man who knew what it was to stand against odds that were against him. I mean, come on. He's a shepherd boy. And he didn't have a 270 Winchester. He didn't have a 12-gauge shotgun. Doesn't, he didn't even own a sword. All he had was a, a slingshot. But when he killed the lion, it does, didn't say that he had a slingshot to kill the lion. The, the lamb was in the mouth of the lion, and he ran out and grabbed the lion. Now, how, how many in their right brain would grab a lion? Say, forget that stupid little lamb. <laughs> I'm just going to cower in my tent, you know. But he didn't. He said, hey, you can't have that lamb. See, he wouldn't let the lion take his lamb. As, as God's people, why do we let the devil steal from us? And it wasn't even his lamb. It was his dad's. And remember when Samuel came to anoint a new king, uh, he told Jesse, hey, bring all your sons. Jesse only brought David's seven brothers. 
And Samuel, the Lord said, don't look at their outward man. They, were, they must have been impressive looking boys. He said, don't look at them. He said, I'm going to go by the heart. And so God said to Samuel, none of these boys are the right boys. And he said, wait a minute. He said, do you maybe perchance have another son? Well, yeah, he's a nobody taking care of the sheep. <laughs> he said, well, bring him here. <laughs> bring him on in. So aren't you glad that God doesn't choose us according to people's opinions even his own dad did not have a good opinion about him think about that well my dad don't believe in me so what <laughs> your heavenly father can use you and so he brings him in and he you know he's some king over israel and it didn't happen for a long time i want you to know god will give you promises but sometimes they don't manifest for a long time Abraham, they say, Abraham, God told Abraham 25 years before Isaac was born, you're going to have a son. And out of that son, your seed's going to become like the stars of heaven and the sands and the seashore. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. After 15 years, his wife came up with a not so brilliant idea and said, well, it's traditional. You can go on to my handmaid and I'll claim her child as my child. That'll be your son. And he had an Ishmael. <laughs> I don't like Ishmaels. <laughs> I haven't had that kind of Ishmael in my life, but I've had Ishmaels. How I many of you have ever had Ishmaels in your life? And then God shows up and says, oh, by that way, that wonderful idea you had. I'm telling you, really, I really believe that, that what we call the seeker-friendly churches, I really believe that's all works of Ishmael. Programs are going to get people saved. I'm not saying that uh, we... we, we um, I'm saying you're, you're people, we want to draw people that are hungry for God. We want people who want Jesus. Uh, we don't want people who like to go roller skating. What are you talking about? I had a roller skating rink back here. I had a lot of kids. But when I shut down a roller skating rink, guess where all those kids went? <laughs> they went to somewhere else where they could find another roller skating rink. <laughs> so we want people who love Jesus. We want people who are hungry for God, hungry for the truth. And, and, and so he, he declares, he, he said, look what he says here. Yea, verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I'm walking in a very hard, difficult place, a very dangerous place, I'm not going to fear no evil. I like some other translations. It says, I will, fear, I will fear or dread no evil. I will not be afraid. Say, I will not be afraid. I shall not dread evil. I shall not, I shall not dread evil. I will not be afraid of evil. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. I'll not be afraid. So I'll not be afraid for pestilence at night, nor the, 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 the evil that flies through. You look in Psalms 91. It's full of it. It says, I'm not going to be afraid. I refuse to be afraid. Now, you can't stop people from being afraid, but I tell you what, you get a, you, you get a relationship like David had with God. He wasn't even afraid of the bear. A bear! He, he grabs, you know, I, I, I never ran into a bear up in Alaska, but I was out there with the Yupik Indians and, 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 and there was no guarantee I wouldn't run into a grizzly. What would you have run past him? Like, uh, as far as I know in my heart, I would have ran at the grizzly. I, I, I wouldn't know what else to do because if you run from them, you're, you're going to be, you're, he's, he's going to be thanking God for supper. <laughs> Especially if it's a Christian bear. <laughs> Lord, thank you for this food I'm about to eat. <laughs> I'm not going to run. You can't run. They said, the minute you run from a bear, they're, go they're coming after you. And, and so we, we, he, he, didn't run at, he didn't run from the bear. He ran towards the bear. He ran towards Goliath. Why? He didn't have a spirit of fear. He knew who was with him. He knew that God was with him. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 617. Wherefore, come out from amongst them and be separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty. Notice who's with us. Amen. Who's with you? The Lord Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The one who overcame principalities and powers and made it show them openly triumphing over them in it. Who's with you? God is with you. Almighty God is with you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He who spoke all things into existence. Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? I mean, that's what, when, when Peter started sinking, Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. How come you're afraid? Well, wait, wait, wait. I'm out here in the middle of the night in a storm in the Sea of Galilee. I ain't got a life jacket on. We have no flashlights. We have no flares. 
and I'm sinking in the depths of the angry sea. And Jesus said, how come you're afraid? You, you see where God lives compared to where we live? The, 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 Peter sinking was a natural man who was, listen, someone who's following Jesus, but not trusting Jesus. You know you can do that? Do you know you can follow God and not trust God? <laughs> I know what I'm talking about because I've done it at times. I'm telling you, I was in here, like I said, I had 20-some people on our staff, and we were really behind financially. And I, I mean, I had 20-some thousand dollars. That was a lot of money back in, it was probably about 1992, something like that. I'm in over here, I'm praying, I'm crying out to God, oh God, oh God, oh God. He probably wanted to say, oh shut up. <laughs> Whining and calling and squalling like a newborn calf in a tin barn roof on a cold winter night. Oh God. And he spoke to my heart. He, and he basically said, what's your problem? I said, my Lord, we need money. He said, your problem ain't money. It shocked me. I knew it was God. He said, your problem ain't money. I said, it's not, because I mean, I've got 20 some thousand dollars of bills on my desk. He said, your problem ain't money. Well, actually, this would have been about 1987. It was right after we got the building up. I don't think we were even quite done with the construction. Back in them days, the guy, my, uh, Clayton Johnson, worked for me over the construction part. And, uh, but anyways, he, he, he said, your problem is not money. I said, it's not. He said, no. He said, your problem is faith. I said, what? He said, you don't know how to trust me. And, and I could have came back and said, yeah, but Lord, I trusted you to put this building up, you know. But he, he doesn't do that. Why, why did Jesus say to Peter, Peter, wow, you just missed it a little bit. You got out of the boat and you were really walking on the water. But Peter, you just missed it a little bit. No, he said, oh, you of little faith. That shows you how far I've got to go. <laughs> you probably have, you're probably farther than I am spiritually. But look how far I've got to go. He said, Peter, why were you afraid? Tell your neighbor, why were you afraid? What are you afraid of? Why well, I might die and do what? I might die and what would happen to you? You'd go to heaven. Go to heaven. Oh, isn't that terrible? <laughs> Isn't that there? I might just go to heaven. How many know y'all, if Jesus tarries, you're all going to die someday. You're just going to get there a little bit sooner than us, that's all. So it says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Oh, there's another kind. There's what we call the fear of God. There's the fear of man, the fear of lack, the fear of, uh, of what people think about us, the fear of sickness, all kinds of fears. But don't have those. Don't take a hold of those fears. Take a hold of the fear of God. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade man. And it says, working out your salvation there with fear and trembling, knowing that it is God which worketh in you, both the willing to do of his good pleasure. I'm telling you, I'm not afraid of man. I'm not afraid of what man can do to me. I'm not afraid of politicians. I'm not afraid of people's opinions. The only time I get concerned about your opinion is when it's true. <laughs> and then I go, uh oh, oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> uh, 2 Peter 1 4, whereby are given unto a succeeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So I've become partakers of Christ. How, how many know there is no fear in the heart of God? Did you know in the life of Jesus walking on this earth, do you know how many times the very first sermon he preached in his hometown, them rascals didn't agree with him, and they were violent people. His relatives, his brothers were in that meeting. Did you know that? He had brothers. And his brothers, with his uncles and with his relatives, and his friends, because when he said, this day is this fulfilled, when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, they picked him up, carried him outside, and there was a cliff. And they're going to throw him over the cliff to kill him. And you know what Jesus did? He, 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 and when they had him, he was probably just talking to the Father. and said, oh God, thank you, Father. I know you're with me, and I know it's not time yet to die. And all of a sudden, when they put him down, they couldn't touch him. He turned around and walked through those mists. Now, I experienced this 
numerous times. I was going over a lot of my, my, my experiences today. And when I first went to the Philippines, I really didn't realize I was going into a very, very dangerous area called the New People's Army. Now, it turns out Marshall had been in the Philippines, too. He knew what it was about to ride in the back of the Jeep, these great big Jeeps with no windows on the side. And the diesel, they have these big diesel pipes that come up and all the diesel fumes. The way they designed it comes into the vehicle and you're breathing in all the diesel. And I already had jet lag. But the first time I went to the Philippines, it was a terrible experience. And I get out there into the uh, province called Samar. And it turned out they told me right away, they, they, they said, because uh, I was joking around, I said, praise the Lord, I'm CIA. And those Filipinos' faces got real shocked. They said, you're what? I said, I'm a Christian in action. They said, oh, Mike, whatever you do, don't ever say that again. I said, why? Because they actually think you are CIA, and they'll kill you faster than what you can, you can, you can say, man. I said, really? So I, when I first went out there, my life had been threatened before by the Yupik Indians and by gang members and by other people that I had preached the gospel to. I mean, the one guy, Gary Kakausi, he tried to stab me to death with a knife, a big guy. And the next day he shot me with a 12 gauge shotgun. I had absolutely no fear. My heart didn't even skip a beat. I had what the Bible says. I had righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, when, you, when, you, when you're not living right, and you have no peace, and you have no joy. Now, if you're not living right, I don't care how much peace and joy you got, you've been deceived. You, 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 if, you, if you have known sin, you better repent of it before you go wrestling with the devil. Before you, if you're in a dangerous situation, cry out for mercy. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I've done it. I said, Lord, I'm not where I need to be, so please have mercy on me. <laughs> and God's had mercy on me. So anyways, so they told me, they said, Mike, they said, uh, and they told me, they said, people that we preach with, they, they said, uh, they capture us, uh, and the Roman Catholics work with them in the Philippines with the communists. They capture you, and they cut your head off. And he said, the next morning, your head is on a post in the town square. When I was there, I, I didn't have no fear. I said, okay, I won't do that. So, but I was there probably the second time, and I had no fear. The third time I went back, some of the guys I had preached with, I said, where's brother and so-and-so? They said, well, brother Mike, he went to be with Jesus. I said, how'd that happen? They said, well, we, they got him, and they put his head on a post in the town square. Well, I don't know why, but in that trip, that spirit of fear tried to get on me. I mean, I literally would go to bed at night and I would see my head in my mind. It was like a graphic image of my stuffy little head on a post in the town square. I could see the blood. I mean, the devil gave, how I many know the devil can give you good images that will kill you? <laughs> I mean, bad images. And so I had to fight my way through that. And it took about a week. I was over there for almost three weeks. But it took about a week to beat that spirit of fear off of me. I, and when I say beat that spirit of fear, I mean with faith. I had a violent faith. I said, I don't care if I die. I'll die for Jesus. I come against that spirit of fear and I toss and turn at night because I kept on seeing my head on a post in the town square because some of the guys I preached with, that's how they died. And I just said, now that didn't stop me from going back over there. Because the next time I went back over there, right before I left, I said, hey, what is the most dangerous place there is? And they said, Leong, it's an island. The last time missionaries went there 10 years ago, they cut their heads off. I said, tell them I'm coming. They said, what? Because oh, don't you think you ought to go under cover? I said, no, tell them I'm coming. It was God. And I gave them money and they printed the flyers. And the next time I came, when I was going across the, China, the, the Sea of China or whatever it is, the, the Philippine Sea, you know, China claims it all now. But as I was going out to the island, they were standing on on the shore with the machetes and the guns anywhere from 30 to 40 of them and they were getting ready to take our heads and when our canoe hit that shore it launched me into the midst of them and we got a church there to this day Amen. to this day you know talk is cheap but we don't need to have a spirit of fear if you got a spirit of fear a spirit of anxiety a spirit of worry Doctor gives you a bad report. I, I can't. I want to help you people. You go to the doctor. They give you a bad report. You get out of the doctor's office. You get on your cell phone. You're texting everybody. And all you do is you open. You swing your barn door wide open. And you're telling all the spirits of illness. Come on in. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. Well, I thought Jesus took it. 
I thought Jesus took your sicknesses and your diseases. What, what, am I wrong? It, it, does the Bible say that Jesus took your sicknesses? And Yeah, well, he might have took your sickness, Pastor Mike, but he didn't take mine. Well, no, no. If you got someone's sickness and disease, it's not yours. It's the devil's. Why don't you just give it back to him? Well, how do you do that? Well, pop this pill, take this shot, lay down on the operating table and, and get this cut out. No, 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 no. Come against it. Speak to it. Tell it to go. Man, I'm preaching myself happy. I am so glad that God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And I can't tell you how many times I could have been full of fear financially, and there was time. My, my wife and I went through a terrible time because the spirit of fear got on me that my wife was going to leave me. It was the spirit of fear. Tormented me. Now, maybe some of you said, man, I wish she would pack up and leave. <laughs> that wasn't my prayer. I didn't want to lose my precious wife that God had given to me. And I, and, and I didn't want to lose her. And, and, but I had to fight that spirit of fear. And once I could get that spirit, it's not. And you don't see people harden their hearts and they go, well, I ain't got no fear because I really don't care anyways. So that's not casting your cares on the Lord. Casting your cares on the Lord. See, remember, if it doesn't have righteousness, peace and joy, it's not the kingdom. Righteousness, peace and joy is not the kingdom. It might be something else. Just. Yeah, who cares? I've known people who are hard in their hearts, and, and they just didn't care. They just didn't care. I mean, I've seen Christians get to the place where they just don't care if they go to hell. Well, now, where is that attitude from? It's from the devil. I don't care if I go to hell. I'm going to do what I want to do. I said, you know, Esau got there, didn't he? It's dangerous, man. You better, you better, the Bible says, protect your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. So uh, here David is in Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear what? No Say it, no evil. No. It was just like all, the, for the last three days, the Lord's been, no evil, no evil. This is to the body, no evil. That's the name of, that's the, name of the message. And I will fear no evil. I will not be afraid of the government. I'll not be afraid of the deep state. I'll not be afraid of the township. Now, if I'm out of the will of God, I better get in line with the will of God. See, you better close the door on the devil. See, and there's times I opened the door and, the, uh, and I opened it wide. But the good news is the devil's not all knowing. And there's been times I have prayed. I prayed. I said, Lord, please don't let the devil see what's going on here. My attitude, my motive, whatever it is. You say, oh, I've never prayed that way. You better pray that way sometimes. Lord, help me get right, for I don't open, give no place to the devil. How much? No, no place to the devil. You know what? I, didn't ever, I never took this into account, but I'm beginning to understand this. Even in how you eat, give no place to the devil. <laughs> I'm still learning that. My daughter tries to tell me, Dad, you shouldn't eat that. You shouldn't do that, Dad. I know the other night, man, I, I just, you know, uh, butter doesn't do real good in my belly, especially when I got a little bit of popcorn with it. Uh, for other words, I like my popcorn with, with I like a, a little bit of popcorn with my butter, belly, with my butter, and it hit me. And I'm telling you what, I was laying in bed and hurting. I mean, no, you, you, you said, well, you can bless it, Pastor Mike. Well, I guess my faith wasn't not enough there to not let it affect me. And so when I eat uh, pepperonis, and, and the other day I took a bag, because we made homemade pizza uh, before they left, the Frasers left, and I grabbed one of them bags of pepperonis, and I started popping them like candy. And, and, and Stephen, he's wanting to get his hand in the pepperonis, and I'm slapping his hand. I said, them are my pepperonis. And I paid for it that night, sitting on the toilet, saying, oh, God, forgive me. Help me, Jesus, you know. But you know what? I gave place to the devil, didn't I? Uh, hello, and, and the Bible says, give no place to the devil. And then all of a sudden, when the enemy finds a way in, and I kind of wish God would blind the devil to the fact that my belly doesn't like pepperonis and sausage and, and, and butter. <laughs> but I guess it's something I'm going to have to learn how to deal with. You've got your own pepperonis, butter, and sausage problems, and you need to deal with them. Say, deal with them. Hey, yea, though I walk through the valley, shall of death, I will fear no evil. Now, let me give you a couple more scriptures before we close tonight, because I'm just, right now, the church in America, 
I'm not talking about the parishioners, though they are. They're full of fear. Amen. They're full of fear. So get, get, I, I want to be there to help people. I do have a little bit of a problem, though, because I've got people that I have not seen that left the church when the COVID hit back in March. And they want my attention. It's hard for me to give them because I, I'm called not to hold their hand, but to feed them the truth and to take them out of fear into faith. Amen. And yet I'm telling you, they want me and I do love them, but they kind of want me to cuddle them in their fear. I don't want to cuddle people in their fear. I want to take them out of their fear. And, and, and I've even sent some of them messages on Facebook. And I said, when are you coming back? I mean, you were with us for 15 years, 10 years, 5 years. When are you coming back? When are you, and I don't say this, when are you going to overcome this? And, and then, are you going to Walmart? Are you going to the grocery store? Are you going to the bank, but you won't come to church? So pray for Pastor Mike. I, I, I have to really deal with my attitude because they, I, they want me to hold them in their fear. I want to rip the fear out of them. Amen. <laughs> rip the worry. Rip the anxiety. Rip the, oh, me, you don't know what I'm going through. That's right. They, they got to come out. I can't help them until they decide, you know what? Let God be true and everything else a lie. Let God be true. I'm not judging their hearts because I'm not going to stand before anybody but the Lord on the day of judgment. And I'm going to give an account of my own life. And I'll tell you right now, if you think you're going to stand in heaven and you're going to see where everybody else missed it, you ain't. God's going to deal with you where you missed it. And then you're going to have to deal with the fact of how far we fell short of what we could have been, what we could have done, what God expected of us. But thank God for forgiveness. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not. God says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help uphold thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand, notice, of my righteousness. So right there is the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost. Let me read it again. Isaiah 41, 10. You ought to take claim this as your scripture. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Don't be tormented, for I am thy God. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't be afraid of government. You know, I had to deal with that because when it looked like the churches were officially shut in Pennsylvania, I wrestled a little bit. I wasn't afraid to go to jail. I just didn't want to bring a reproach upon the gospel. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if, if I got a goal because I believe your word, I wrote a book about 30 reasons why we got to come together. I said, if I go to go to jail, I'll go to jail. But I'd rather not. Because <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to, I, I know it's not pride. It's not a, a thing about first, you know, First Amendment rights. So we do have First Amendment rights. But I'm going to obey you, God. And, and, and then so I went online and I downloaded five pages of, uh, from, from Governor Wolf that said, n n not necessary, necessary. I got to the fifth page on the very bottom, five rows up. It said religious organizations are necessary. I started shouting. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I posted it on the front window of our door and somebody took it down. I don't know who did. But it says five. It says that we are allowed to gather. So I was ready, praise the Lord. I had both barrels loaded. <laughs> so if somebody came here and was going to bother us, whether it be policemen, uh, I, I, that's why I put it up on the door. I said, right here it is. There it is. There, right there, we're allowed to gather. But what would you have done, Pastor Mike? I would have kept on gathering. And those who have brave of heart would have kept on coming. Psalms, listen, David. David wrote most of the Psalms, Psalms 118.6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what command do unto me. Can I, can I turn this, can we apply this to everything else? I will not fear, what can sickness do to me? Really? Come on, what? Yeah, well, it makes you feel bad. Well, I know that. Well, just rise up in Jesus' name and take authority over it. Just rise up. Say, God, you know what? I believe it pleases God when we're in the midst of suffering and we refuse to let go of them. 
I'm going to say again, I believe you want to please God. Just say, God, you know what? I'm going to stand. Now, if you've done something stupid like I did with all that butter and pepperonis the other day, then you need to repent of that. <laughs> say, Lord, I repent. I repent for picking out on pepperonis and butter. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. OK, now help me get through this mess. And um, but listen, Psalms three. Verse 6, I will not be afraid. Listen, David said this, because now remember, uh, now th he's, he's being attacked by the Philistines, and now King Saul and all of Israel, he's, his, wanted po his posters wanted David, you know, for treason, all across Israel. And David said this, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. There's faith. 10,000, you know, I've had hundreds of people get mad at me, but I've never had a crowd of t over 10,000. How many have ever had a crowd of over 10,000 that wanted to kill you? I mean, they wanted to kill David. He, they, I mean, King Saul is going to give them lots of money to kill David. King Saul. And, and yet when King Saul died, David tore his clothes and he wept over the death of King Saul. Ten thought and we're afraid of COVID. We're afraid of this and we're afraid of that and we're afraid. Now, if you were a sinner, I could understand. But you're born again. You're washed in the blood. You got the name of Jesus. I'm afraid I might be homeless. I've been homeless many times. Guess what? God was always there. I mean, I, I think as we close, thank God I, I married a woman who was courageous. I mean... She's going to Valley Forge Christian College. She's at the top of her class, even in public school. She marries this nobody, nothing crazy young man with an afro who doesn't have a job, who can't even afford to buy the wedding rings, so she buys the wedding wing, rings. You know, you know, there's little gold rings. That's all she had. Gets in a pickup truck with me. An F-250, 1973, this is 1978, and heads off to a Baba college with no money. No place to lay our heads. And she never complained. She never com got down there, was sleeping in a pup tent, sleeping in the back of the pickup truck. Ended up living on the sleeping on the floor of somebody's apartment, which are still friends of mine. Uh, uh, Tom and, and Rutherford, Tom Rutherford and his wife, you know. I still remember their oldest son was probably about maybe six years old. His name was Todd, uh, Tom, and Kathy Rutherford. They're friends of ours. And, and, and then we finally got our own apartment. And then I didn't have enough money for her to go, go to Bible school. So I told her, I said, if you don't go, I'm not going. God's going to provide the money. And right when it looked like we weren't going to have enough money for the beginning of the school, God supernaturally brought in the money. And we went through school together. And then we left school, and when we left school, we're living in a van. I had an old painter's van. I traded a pickup truck for and got a little bit of extra money. And, 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 and that was, and, and, and then we finally ended up at an Assembly of God church, but then we fly off to Germany. Michael's newborn, three months old, land in Frankfurt, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go, land in Frankfurt. But she didn't worry, she didn't fear, she didn't complain. Come on, get out of here. She didn't complain. You know what that means? She had the word of God in her heart. As a little girl, eight years old, she got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and she began to hide the word of God in her heart. And to this day, I'll lay there and my wife, I'll listen. I think a couple years ago, she listens to the Bible on audio. I think I saw her one year go through the whole Bible three times in one year, three times. And that's why she doesn't have fear in her heart. Whew. Because she's hid the word of God in her heart. Hey, if you think you're not going to have fear without God, and you listen to a lot of preachers, they'll fill you with fear. <laughs> I mean, they'll fill you plump full of fear. Because all the gloom and doom and is the end of the world. Like I told you here about maybe two weeks ago, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about the election. I'm praying. And it was maybe two months ago and the Lord said, spoke to me. He said, son, he said, what if Trump doesn't win? In my heart, I said, yeah. He said, Am I still on the throne? I started laughing. He said, am I not bigger than this government? I said, yeah. Yeah, you're bigger than this government. He said, your happiness is in me. <laughs> and that's amazing because that's the first time I really discovered that God wanted me to be happy. <laughs> but my happiness is in him. Can we get a hold of that? Just a couple more scriptures. Isaiah 43, 
Verse 1, but now thus saith the Lord that created the old Jacob and he that formed the old Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Listen, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not. Remember, now get a hold of this, Pastor Pete, because you'll be going through this over in Africa. When you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I better get that but two fist. <laughs> you better grab that. You better grab that. Well, I don't need that. Well, okay. If you say so. Psalms 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of half of them. No, all of them. <laughs> say, the Lord delivers me even out of self-made problems. <laughs> Isn't that most of our problems? Self-made a lot of times. Oh, the devil's after me again. Well, yeah, I could have said that the other night, but I opened the door by pepperonis and butter. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Uh, it says, uh, therefore will, I not, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters are of roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Come on, David, you're exaggerating. No, he ain't. That's how big our God is. Say, our God is that big. He's way bigger than that. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now, I say this in love. Through the years, I've had certain people rise up against me, and they literally went out of the way to destroy myself and my family. I've never spoke a curse over them, did not gossip against them, did not belittle them, did not slander them. I just gave it to God. But I'm telling you, I could tell you story after story of people who came, and they weren't coming against me. They were coming against God without knowing it. One of those men, not too long ago, I had led him to Christ. He backslid, and it's a long story, and he got to the place to where he threatened to kill me, burn down the church. But I don't have a spirit of fear. And uh, the guy actually owned a lot of guns. He, he was involved in a local militia. And it looked like he could come and pop me anytime he wanted to. And he used to actually, on his property, I know because people that I knew were, were running with him, uh, he'd put guns in tubes, cap them off, and bury them in the ground all over his property. I mean, the guy was just, and uh, so, but here, some time ago, he, he got cancer. It was terrible. And he repented. And he asked God to forgive him. And he called me up. And tears were rolling down my face as I prayed with him. But the Lord told me he's coming home. He's coming. And he did. He, about two weeks ago, he went home to be with Jesus. But he went home to be with Jesus. But listen, God, God, God didn't kill him, but he opened the door for the devil to kill him. But the good news is he's with Jesus. Paul said this, I've turned such a one over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh, for the saving of the soul. And there's people that we really, really want to not just get saved. We want them to get healed. But I have found out many times those people never got healed. And really, they went home to be with Jesus. And they're far better off. Because I know people that if they would have got up off the bed of affliction, I know in my heart, they would have gone right back to the world. Now, you and I, we don't. We're not God, so we can't. You said, but isn't healing available for them? Yeah, but see, their faith hasn't been developed. Faith doesn't just appear on your branches one day like ripe cherries falling off a tree. You've got to develop your faith. 
and, 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 and you got to pray that God gives you a chance to develop your faith. But a lot of pe- people blow their opportunity. They, they have year after. I'll give you one example uh, with, with the fig tree. The, lo- the master of the vineyard comes. He looks at the fig tree. There's no fruit there. One of the fruits is faith. He says, there ain't no fruits on this tree. He said, cut it down. He said, it's, 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 it's wasting. We'll put up a new tree. And, and the caretaker, which is Jesus, he said, just give me three, just give me another chance. Let me dung it. Let me prune it. Let me work with it. And if it doesn't, it doesn't bear fruit, then you can cut it down. I'm telling you, this is very serious. God demands fruit. God wants fruit. And the day will come when God finally says, no fruit, let it be cut down. And I take this very seriously. See, I got the fear of the Lord in me. God wants Mike Yeager to have fruit. And love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, obedience, holiness, trust, confidence. Right now, the church has fallen way short of what it should have been. The church in America should have been a shining example of boldness and love and courage and faithfulness. And instead, they have failed to test. I'm not judging their hearts. How many know they have failed to test? Now, will God give them another opportunity? I believe right now they ought to be taking a bow by the horn and saying, because I've done it at times. I've got place, in a place spiritually where I wasn't growing strong spiritually and something hit my, me and I said, God, give me a chance. And I would rise up in faith and I would take a hold of the horns and once again go after God. But I, I, I think what concerns me is a lot of people aren't doing that. Right now, pastors ought to be rising up and pastors ought to be repenting. And they ought to be saying, I'm sorry for shutting the church down. Whether you believe this or not, pastors need to repent for shutting down the house of God. Well, it was only out of concern. Well, so you're calling God a liar? Calling God a liar? And God says, nothing should come to harm you? Yeah, but what if they got COVID? Well, okay, but let's believe God to get healed from it. It doesn't say you won't have problems. So, I mean, you know, God never guaranteed you ain't going to have. The devil is going to attack you. But what do you do? You rise up in Jesus' name and you take authority over it. Now, let's close with Revelation 21.8. This really concerns me here. The very, well, listen, but the fearful, unbelieving, abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars, shall have their part in a lake which burneth with fire and primstone, which is the second death. Well, Pastor, uh, 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 I'm not all those. No, 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 no. It, it's not saying you got to be all of these. It says, this is who's not going to make it. It says people who are fearful are not going to make it. It says they're not, they're, they're not going to go in. Let me read another translation. The fearful or the unsteadfast the abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all the liars. Fearful, fearful. Say fearful. Fearful. Well, what is fear? It's the opposite of faith. I'm, I'm going to tell you the body of Christ right now. We need to get to the place where we're not afraid of sickness and disease. I'm not afraid of it. Say, I'm not afraid of it. It is what it is. I'm not afraid of it. Well, what if some terrible disease hits you? It has. It has colon cancer. That's terrible. I mean, I had all the symptoms but one. My kid, my liver didn't shut down. I had it. Did you have to fight the spirit of fear? Yeah, I had a, the only reason I had to fight that was because I knew God wasn't done with me. Now, if I knew God was done. If I died from colon cancer, so what? I'm not trying to impress anybody. Who cares? It's not a thing of pride. People get offended when you tell them your faith isn't where it should be. How, how, how many of you would acknowledge your faith is not where it should be? Let me see your hands. So what if somebody says, well, you need to de- develop your faith? I'll say, well, yeah, you're right. And so do you. <laughs> None of us have achieved that. Matter of fact, Paul said, I have not yet apprehended all that I've been at. Why? Because it's only by faith. So, Father, I thank you now. This word will not return void in Jesus name. Amen.